Fairfax, Ms. Fillercorn. Mr. Speaker, point of personal privilege. The gentleman has floor. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, this November, both of my children will be eligible to vote. For my daughter, who many of you recently met, this will be the first election that she'll be old enough to participate in and exercise her right to have a voice in the direction Virginia and our country. In November of 2006, when the marriage amendment was on the ballot, my children were 12 and 10. Do you realize there are even 25-year-olds that were not old enough that were not old enough to participate in the election in 2006, the one we keep referencing here on the floor? In fact, there's a growing generation that was not old enough to lend their voice to the 2006 amendment. You know, many members of this generation are either at the age now or entering the age when people are getting married or thinking about getting married to the person that they love. Yet they did not have the choice, they did not have the chance to have their voices heard in 2006. I know from speaking to my own children, from, from uh, to the kids of my friends, young people that I meet every day, that their priorities include finding a good job, finding a place they can afford to live in, getting accepted to a college of their choice, and being able to pay for that education. This generation is simply not interested in having laws that limit who a person can marry and share their life with. We have seen this poll after poll. In fact, an ABC Washington Post poll last March showed that 81% of those aged between the ages of 18 and 29 support same-sex marriage. So, Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen of the House, as this debate goes on and references continue to be made with regard to the 2006 Amendment, as we heard again this morning, it's important that we rem remember and listen to this group of individuals whose verse voices were never heard in 2006, however, whose lives and choices are affected today and now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.